Hey guys, Adam from Tested here. I am at FBFX Special Effects Studio in London, and you might recognize this. If you remember, Tested covered FBFX's incredible work on Alien Covenant when we visited the set last summer, and we covered the suits that they built for that film. And the reason one's here is because I wanted to go into a little more detail, specifically into the beautiful details that make these things look so real and look so genuine on camera. I'm here with Tom Stratfield Moore from FBFX. Tom, will you give me a little guide yeah, sure. into what how you... much you guys layer into these things to make them look real? Um, well, there's, there's many, many uh, parts, many, many materials. We've got carbon fiber, we've got etchings that cover the whole thing. All the little details just sort of add sort of a little bit more realism. You know, you, you, you can't really pick them up on camera, but all those little bits just add up to like a sort of a, a great looking product, really. And also um, a ton of lights. I don't think we turned the lights on to the full effect when yeah, we sure. were in yeah. Australia. There so we go. We've got, we've got lighting around the band, around the front, mm -hmm. uh, headlight. We've got some tail lights at the back, orange tail light. This is almost like you should stop looking at me and just start like zooming in to this crazy level of is, am I right? A lot of this is like etched brass. It and is, yeah, yeah, little etched brass panels everywhere. Um, the centerpiece looks like a fan. It is actually a fan. It's bringing air into the helmet to help the actor. So this is um, actually one of the, part of the cooling system. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is. So Instead of being in the backpack, you guys have put exactly, it exactly, exactly, yeah. But I mean, most of the actors do like we can pop, we can pop the front, bring the visor up get the air in, uh, yeah. a few, you know, a few actors get claustrophobic, but that just helps with the airflow and the heat. And yeah, we've got, we've got locking, uh, locking ring. So this, this slides open Ooh. and close. So you can bring the helmet on and off. Oh, and that, I, that sorry, just, I closed that, that one. Closed it. There we go. Yeah. So you bring the helmet on and off like that, like so. And it stays lit. So it's, it's, yeah. oh, I just. Yeah, you can lift it. Oh, it's powered by the, oh my God. Yeah. And you can feel it's relatively light. It's all carbon fiber body. The main weight's in the, in the visor and in the dome. Um, and yeah, we've got working, working mechanisms at the front. The catch <laughs> opens, brings the visor up. Okay, um, can, I want to go over here and take yeah, a look at this yeah, table yeah, here. Do. You can see and feel how light the panel is. That's just the shell. That's just the carbon fiber shell. And you guys are, wow. That's and you can feel how rigid it is, how strong it is. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's a, it's fine. A little okay. crack. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, again, this that's, is this, this is only a, a few ounces. Yeah, I mean that's you bought. That's like a few different pieces put together. This is one solid panel. Right. Um, but yeah, together they're very light. It's just it's mainly the vise and the dome, so about three mil thick, um, and that's where the weight is. But overall. It's a much, much lighter helmet than, a, than, say, like a full cast, you know, like a full vacuum cast. Right, cast in helmet. resin. Exactly. And that's yeah. easier on the actors. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But then every single one of these badges and stickers, this is, come on over here, is a separately designed and etched mm. piece, and you guys mm. have to chronicle. So this, this, this is a very small number of the amount that actually we had. This is, this is a, sort of uh, Michael Mooney, who's an associate costume designer. Some of his baby, his ideas, um, a lot of these are his designs, and they just, they just add another element to it, you know, just a little bit of detail, a little shine. It just makes it look like a real product. So these three bins full of stuff, this isn't the total amount that you had oh, in no, the costume? Oh, not at all. We had, we had a lot. We had hundreds. You could almost cover the entire thing in etch panels, really, <laughs> almost. And every single one of these is Michael or somebody designing this in the computer, yeah, on a computer sending it out to a brass etcher, then it gets a paint treatment, then it gets a weathering exactly, treatment, and exactly. then it goes... And then it's just perfectly glued on, you know, with some... You guys fine. are insane. This is one I wanted to point out. So this is the, uh, the big yellow hard suit that I wore. And this is one of the gauntlets. So you guys actually put a real laser in the fingertip uh, There was here. a laser, yeah, because there's one in the, in the, in the film, he cuts uh, a rope with it. But then you also have these little tiny part numbers that are yeah. serial etched in here, little badges. And no one's and ever going to see that on camera. Those little screws as well to, to, yeah. you know, to attach it. It could just be glued. It's just the, the attention to detail is insane, mm. and I deeply respect yeah. that, Tom. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, I like it too. Oh. It makes it, it makes it important, you know. It makes it it makes it a better thing. Um, is um, there uh, is there somebody who tells Michael when to stop? Is he uh, is he just uh, uh, constantly all of constantly? Us. All of us normally, <laughs> but he, no, he he. I mean, he's always thinking about new things to add to it. 
um, this, uh, whether it's a technical thing or a uh, visual thing, mechanical thing, anything you just want to add more and more and more because it will just make it a better, better thing at the end of the day. And, um, and, and obviously there's a, there's a time limit, there's a time yeah. factor. Yeah. Um, he could probably carry on until, you know, literally someone says action that first day. Um, but yeah, it just, it just helps. It, it seems to be kind of a signature style for you guys, that mm -hmm. layering in. I mean, even on the inside of this hard helmet yeah. is all of this detail that really the audience isn't necessarily going to notice, no. but it's really, really part of that storytelling. Yeah. This helmet is actually quite a crucial part. It was actually sitting on the table in the movie in Aiden Covenant there, all standing around. It actually has a, a quite a sort of integral part of a scene, so it had to be reasonably detailed. But we were sort of, we've actually given less time to make this than the actual, the final, the, the big suit. This is actually a whole separate separate piece that you yeah. guys sculpted that's yeah. not part of the original no, suit. No, that won't actually go into there, but it'll, it's meant to look like it should do. The other thing that I was interested to see is that you guys have, you guys have this. This is, mm. you 3D printed this here, mm. but this is part of your problem solving process yeah. for, the, for how the bearings were supposed to move. Yeah, exactly. So where, the, where each joint's meant to be, this is just a sort of test to see if it will work, how much sort of range of movement we we're going to get. Um, Obviously, you, you know, you want the actor to be able to do as much as they can. Yeah. Uh, we were briefed and told that he was going to do a certain, uh, certain job on, on screen, right. certain movement. So there's only a limited thing that it needs to do. But obviously, we wanted it to work as much as he could, you know. Yeah. Possibly go upstairs, possibly not. <laughs> um, but Oh, wow. To even just, right, right, right. Walking yeah. upstairs is non-trivial yeah, in something you know, this Yeah, long. exactly, exactly. And yeah, this just helped as a guide to know where the, where the bearing should be. This is something we didn't get to see when we visited in Australia was the actual legs of this suit. This, oh. one's, this one's actually, this is a locked, locked leg. But you can see where, the, where each one... Oh, on it's the locked. This one doesn't actually yeah, work. That one's locked, but you can see where the same bearings are meant to be um, and, it, and it works. The arms, we can show you the arms, the arms actually all move and rotate exactly the same as this scaled down model. Oh, I just love how easily this moves. Yeah, it moves all the way around, rotates around. You can almost have your arm in pretty much any, any position. So we covered um, this in, in Australia, uh, how, how gorgeous this suit yeah. is, but one of the things we didn't really get into detail is the inside, what the actor sees. I mean, all of these mm. control panels, that's a lot of active electronics, right? Um, yeah, we've got, again, banks of LEDs, we've got screens, we've got GoPros. Um, and those and GoPros then, are getting footage for the film. Uh, yeah, they could use it if they wanted to. And you guys are spending as much time on the interior detailing as you are on the exterior detailing. Yeah, this, this dashboard actually, we spent a lot of time in, in, in doing this. It actually sort of mimics the console that was in um, the terraforming bay on set. So they had, um, we used the same company that produced the panels that lit from behind the blue lights. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, sort of very similar design. We wanted to just sort of mirror that into in the suit. As if the same contractor was giving some continuity yeah, exactly. between these two pieces exactly. of equipment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so how is all that powered? Well, it's, yeah, funny you should ask, but we use our own um, circuit boards. Um, you guys design your got, own circuit boards and yeah, your own electronics too? control all of this. Yeah, stuff. exactly. We've, we've sort of used the same board through a number of films, all uh, programmable. You know, you can dim the lights and you can and, and change and adjust settings. So you can adjust um, flicker, you can adjust the warmth, the color temperature uh, of the lights for the shots? No, and... normally the same, same, same color, oh, but okay. it's, it's, it's a dimmable thing. Right. Um, and uh, obviously all remotes. And, you know, if you had a, a number of suits, you could control all of them at once, or we could control them individually. By remote control. By remote control. So exactly. you guys also have radio circuitry that you've um, designed to put in there. Yes, exactly. And it's, it's not the neatest, but it all, it all sits in perfectly yeah. there. Um, and obviously, it's, it's trying to fit all this stuff in a suit with a, with a human in as well. Um, Who's going to spend and, hours uh, and hours and hours in there, and you exactly, still need access exactly, to that stuff. Exactly, and it's warm, and, and they could be suspended. Um, this suit was actually obviously on a, on a pole arm, so it's suspended, so there's harnessing. You've custom painted the, the buckles uh, here. As... Yeah, it's, well, th this was just a, a standard buckle, oh, okay. um, but they were obviously had to be very strong. They had yeah. to keep, keep the actor in the suit, and you know, he could be six, ten feet in the air. And again, obviously, you need padding. And what, this, is, this is remarkable stuff. What is this? It's a, it's a spacer fabric. It's, 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 uh, you know, it absorbs impacts, and it's strong, but it's also breathable. So it's a super um, lightweight, very breathable that allows circulation to happen, so the actors aren't overheating. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, but also and provides just, padding, so the hard parts of the suit aren't yeah, impacting. Yeah, because there are a few sort of hard, you know, sharp parts of the suit. Obviously, going to be the angles of um, the design and things. Um, 
with the and carbon fiber and the real harnessing in here and the air movement, you guys are doing a lot of the same kind of problem solving that real spacesuit designers are confronting. This is, this is, Possibly, I know it's, that it's not going to keep you alive in space, but in terms yeah. of the engineering strengths and the comfort for the person inside required, yeah. you're, you're drifting deeply into actual NASA territory. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to sort of think about what's required for the actor, for the person that's obviously going to be worn by a human and sort of what do they need so they're sort of comfortable, that it will work, they can do their job, they can act, stay alive, you know, they, they won't overheat, you know, all, the, all these factors have to be in at the design stage and through yeah. production and the final thing here, how, how it looks. It's really cool. I wouldn't mind wearing this for 10 hours. Well, yeah, I don't know, maybe not today, it's quite hot today. But hey, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a little warm today. Yeah. When you look at this now, after all that work, do you have like some PTSD or do you like this? I think, I think we always do it, every, every <laughs> film, every film, especially really Scott film, it feels like there's just, there's a, there's a lot to do um, to, make a, to make a sort of great looking thing for a movie, but it's a lot of hard work, a lot of hours, and, the, then, and then we'll do it again, you know, two years down the line again. Well, so. I mean, it just, it really shows the, 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 these beautiful little lights and these tiny little details. Mm. For me, it, it's, it's, it's so gratifying to see how much pride you guys take in every mm. last little mm. bit. Yeah, I mean, like you say, the soul, you'd rarely see that, but at least it look, you know, it's got all the detailing, it's a logo, it's got like, little infilled resin there just to sort of make it pop. Um, Incredible. Tom, yeah. thanks for giving me yeah, a no tour through this. No